here's my um, start of my presentation here. I want to, again, you already said this disclaimer, and it's the same thing is true in the United States. You know, because this is a supplemental product or an activating product, it is not a drug. It cannot claim to treat or mitigate disease. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that this doesn't work. And I want to talk primarily about two primary pillars of health, and they involve the the idea or the concept of oxidative stress and also of mitochondrial function. There are two other pillars, but they're not germane to this talk, and I'm going to stick primarily with the first one, which is about oxidative stress. And that gets into your uh, discussion, uh, Una, about what we were talking about. What is it? Uh, you know, it all rev revolves around the oxygen molecule, if you think about it. Uh, oxygen, we think of as being really good and necessary for us. Obviously, it was important for us to take that first breath of life. But if you recall, oxygen is only 21, or air, I should say, is only 21% oxygen. The rest is nitrogen and other inert substances. So actually, more is toxic. And in my field of pediatrics, we know for a fact that if you expose premature infants to too much oxygen, they actually go blind. And it can actually induce lung disease. So while we need it, we also need to know that it can be toxic. And here's the kicker. This oxygen that brings us life is also the very thing that's going to kill us. And I want to say that again. We need oxygen, but it's also the very thing that is going to do us in in the end. And so understanding why that is, is paramount to the whole process that we're talking about. If you think about oxygen, it causes oxidation. So what is that? You know, its obvious effects on metal are that it causes steel to rust, aluminum to corrode. But you know what? Our cells are rusting too, but they rust in a different way. You don't recognize it. You might first see it as wrinkles, later than cell damage. And when you have a lot of cell damage, that leads to inflammation. And then ultimately, that's key factor in aging. Well, and then that, of course, leads to disease and ultimately cell death. So we rust as well, and this is due to the effects of oxygen. Now, so here's your example of something that comes from nature, fleshy apple, and everybody knows what happens when you leave it out in the presence of oxygen. It turns brown, and it essentially rusts, and this is what's happening to all of our cells every single day. So why is that? Well, the, the property that causes this is something to do with radicals. Uh, not this radical. Okay. Uh, who slipped this in here? Uh, I don't mean this kind of radical. I mean free radicals. So what are free radicals? Free radicals are essentially small, very active oxygen particles that are produced by everything that we encounter in our daily life. Uh, they are due to the effects of radiation, smoking, bad habits, UV light, air pollution. Uh, our blood cells make um, uh, free radicals. Our mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of our cells, produce mitochondria. Exercise produces um, free radicals. Uh, so lots of different things do that. And free radicals, essentially, when they're inside the cell, create all sorts of havoc and essentially tear up our DNA molecules, damage them. And ultimately, if that's damaged enough, you actually get mutations, and this can lead to cancer. So the key component of all this, the common denominator, is this oxygen molecule. And this is what I was saying is the, is the bad factor. Here we call these the bad guys. Okay, free radicals are bad. Simple as that. All right, well, what do we have then that allows us to survive? How do we, how do we deal with this damage that's ongoing every single day? Well, if you look at the top of the triangle, we have some primary internal antioxidants that are present at the very moment we're born. And they go by specific names, which I'll mention in a second. But what we do on our own time is try to uh, put off the negative effects of free radical damage by taking in antioxidants in our diet. And that's great. I mean, we can eat kale and eat broccoli and eat garlic and drink wine and all the things that we do that we've read about that are important to uh, forestall oxidative injury. And you can do that. But they're not nearly as effective as these three. The top of the game here is SOD. This stands for superoxide dismutase. It's the most powerful antioxidant our bodies and our cells can make. The second most powerful is catalase. And the third most powerful is glutathione peroxidase. 
We need these things. And they are in our cells, in every single one of our cells, and they're produced by the millions. And they allow us to get rid of millions of free radicals in a day uh, and deal with the uh, constant onslaught that we have in being exposed to these free radicals. So obviously these are the good guys. Now I like to put a Superman sign by it because you know we really need these on our side uh, and they are going to save the day. So when the amount of free radicals that we have in our body exceeds our own ability to neutralize them, that is the definition of oxidative stress. It's as simple as that. It's an imbalance of our ability to fight off the bad guys with the good guys. We just don't have enough of them. All right, now we know in research, if you look at pubmed.gov at the NIH in the United States, you can trace over 200 diseases, perhaps as many as 500 diseases, all relating to oxidative stress. You can type in any disease you want and type in oxidative stress and you're gonna have a hit on that database. So we know it's operative in all of these. So this is due to free radical damage. And if you look at all these body systems, the heart, the skin, the kidneys, the joints, it goes on and on. If you look at the brain, for example, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, OCD behavior, autism, ADHD, migraines. If you look at the top where it talks about the heart and you talk about um, myocardial infarction or hypertension, all of these are related to inflammation and oxidative stress. This is the root cause of all of these. But I gotta tell you, in my 30 plus years of treating medicine, of patients with medicine, my job is to attach or to address all of those different body systems using my medicine. That's what my degree is in, the doctor of medicine. I use medicines to avert or to uh, forestall injuries to these different organ systems. But maybe really that isn't what we should be doing. And I think that's the whole concept of NRF2 technology. We should probably try to reduce that central core area and minimize it so its effect on all of the body systems is minimal. And we do that by bringing in the good guys, by increasing our cellular production of SOD, glutathione, and superoxide dismutase and um, catalase. If we can bring those up to where they were when we were young and a newborn, we stand a chance of forestalling the aging effects of free radicals that our body is producing all the time. So if you think about it, all of our cells are coded. We have 46 chromosomes and all of our survival genes have been mapped. Well, you know, if you take 23 pair of those chromosomes and you look at those little horizontal bars going across and say just this one chromosome that's pointed out here, these genes code for proteins and enzymes that our body produces and is constantly um, present. And we know that there are two in particular that we need to be aware of. One is called the NRF2 protein, and the other one is called the NRF1 protein. And these have been identified in our bodies as master regulators of our cell protection. So how does protandum work? Uh, this is a diagram. I want you to look in the upper right-hand corner where it shows a protandum molecule, and you'll see that the protandum molecule migrates to the outside of the cell, and it essentially acts like a doorbell uh, or a door knocker on the cell. It says, hey, wake up. I want to turn on your system. And it does this by activating a chemical called a kinase. That kinase is listed there in yellow. If you notice, in the middle of the cell um, uh, area there, and I can't really point to it with the screen, there's a blue molecule there, and a little red ball. That red ball is the NRF2 messenger protein. It sits there and it's attached to this KEEP1 protein. It sits there and it waits for the door knocker to knock on a cell. And when that happens, it's activated and it migrates to the nucleus of the cell where the cell then is able to produce millions of protective enzymes and also antifibrotic factor and uh, anti-inflammatory proteins by the millions. These are our survival genes, and the NRF2 protein is what's key to do that. And protandum essentially is an NRF2 activator and activates this pathway. So when you activate NRF2, you increase the superoxide dismutase by 34%, and you can increase your glucatalase by 54%, and ultimately glutathione by 300% in 120 days. 
essentially you reduce your oxidative stress from re free radical damage to 40% or more in 30 days. So this is all because of activation of survival genes. So essentially your DNA that you have is not necessarily your destiny. You might have genes that code for something bad in your health, but most of your genes lie dormant, 80% of them. Only 20% of your DNA is expressed. So you can change the way that your genes are expressed. When you do that, that is the concept of biohacking. That's what we're doing. We are all biohacking. Anybody who uses ProTandem is doing this very thing. You are turning on a cellular pathway in the genes of your, your cells to allow you to survive the onslaught of being exposed to free radicals. The other option is not to do it. And when you don't do it, you're being hijacked. So biohacking or hijacking, you know, we're hijacked every single day, physically through injuries and cancer, emotionally through your daily stressors of everyday life, biochemically through toxins that you inhale or breathe, radiation, uh, allergens, pollutants, and other poor food choices, drugs and alcohol. All of these can hijack you. Or you can biohack. And in that instance, you're optimizing your genetic potential. You're becoming the best version of yourself using the science of nutrigenomics. I think I might have someone writing on the screen. I'm not sure why, but anyways, we'll proceed on. Nutrigenomics is merely the study of the effects of food and food compounds on your genetic expression. How dietary compounds, which for which ProTandem is, interfaces with your genes. So if you look at supplementation versus activation, when you are supplementing, you're basically guessing. You know, there are millions of vitamin D products out there. Which one's better? Which one's produced by what? There's lack of any product-specific research as to which one might do a better job. Lack of quality control. Do you really know what the end result of gene expression is on your overall cellular health? But when you are using the new science of nutrigenomics, you're using today's breakthroughs, and these are peer-reviewed published studies. There's at least seven, or I'm sorry, 26 publicated studies with regard to Britannum specifically on how this interfaces with NRF2 activation. A lot of these were done as third-party independent funded studies having nothing to do with the Life Vantage company at all, and what they were looking at is the end result on the genes and cellular health. So we're using the concept of synergy here, which is putting things together that work in unison for a greater good. I wanna say this, that people are fed by the food industry, which pays absolutely no attention to health, and we're treated by the health industry, which is me, and up to this point, they have paid no attention to food. I didn't learn about anything having to do with food except for you know a few classes, but certainly not as much as I know now. So Life Vantage seeks to change that paradigm with the little yellow pill, utilizing ProTandem NRF2 and NRF1, which you maybe may not know about yet, but you will soon. And so in using those two products, we attempt to use food products to save um, uh, you know, our cellular health. So here's ProTandem NRF2 that many of you are already familiar with. So what's in it? Well, five ingredients, they're all natural, organic, uh, non-GMO products. It contains ashwagandha root, a copa extract, green tea extract, milk thistle, and turmeric. And you know, all of these are known in nature to be NRF2 agonists or NRF2 activators. There's thousands of different NRF2 activators. But if you put these particular five together in a specific formulation, they actually become synergistic with each other to the extent that you increase their effectiveness by 1,800%. I mean, that cannot be said of any other product. So, I mean, you can eat tons of kale and broccoli and use those things, but they do not work as well as ProTandem does. And that's why they got their patent. So essentially, this lowers oxidative stress by an average of 40% in 30 days. It significantly reduces your cellular stress through NRF2 activation. It induces enzymes that are capable of neutralizing more than 1 million free radicals. That's for the life of the enzyme in the cell. That's 24 seven. It regulates over 400 survival genes. Additionally, this is beyond the superoxide dismutase, the catalase and the glutathione that I was talking about. It's essentially like tuning a piano. 
I'm going to get to that analogy in a, in a second because I think it'll make it clear. But know that this helps the body repair and rejuvenate its own cells, and it's the only natural supplement that has ever been proven to actually extend life in mammals by 7%. This was a study that was done on the National Institute of Aging uh, Division of the NIH. Now, if you look at the products, I mean, you could take, drink lots of wine and eat hundreds of oranges and take eat 11 pounds of blueberries. That's what it would take to equal one pro tandem. So we know in everyone who takes it, this was a study that was done some years ago in about 2005, but in that study, and it has a p-value of 0.0001, just for you science, uh, statistical geeks who don't know what that means, that means that only in 0.01% did this not affect the outcome of these people who took the product. So almost 99.99% of people will have a benefit from this. This is everyone, age essentially 20 to 68. That's the range of people have been tested. So it reduces free radical stress or free radical damage by 40% and as much as 70% in some people in just 30 days. Now, this is what would happen to your T-bar or your oxidative stress level without ProTandem. As you age, you see it climbs. From age 20 on up, it goes up. But when you give people ProTandem, it brings it back down to a level playing field. So essentially, your cells age at the rate it would have been if you were a 20-year-old. It doesn't stop aging. It slows it down. Now, if you look at ProTandem and compare it to other NRF2 products, Let's talk about this one first, sulforaphane on the bottom right corner. This is the NRF2 um, ingredient that's present in broccoli and kale. You see it's a low level, but it's there, it's present. Look at dimethyl fumarate on the left-hand corner. This is a new drug that came out in the United States just two, three months ago called Tecvidera. It was made for people with multiple sclerosis. It is 50,000 US dollars per year to take this. Look at this one, Bartoloxone. A failed drug, had a lot of side effects, got to slightly higher levels, and now I want you to look at the left-hand corner. This is ProTandem, you guys. This is absolutely unbelievable. For $59 Australian US dollars and 41 US dollars, look at the levels of NRF2 induction by this particular herbal product, it cannot even compare to Tecvidera, a $50,000 a year drug. This is absolutely amazing. Now, I mentioned about tuning your piano. You know, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, I want myself to stay in tune with ProTandem. You know, when you tune something, you are bringing something into harmony. You're adjusting your, something for precise functioning you want it to work more effectively. That's what the definition of tuning is. Now, if you look at a keyboard, let's use this as an analogy. Here's a keyboard on a piano. Every single one of those keys has a frequency. Those are equal to your genes. Now, your genes, if you zoom in on them, look like this, the little horizontal lines, and they each have a specific purpose. Well, here is that piano that grandma bought in 1969 brand new, and you see all those green bars, and they line up very nicely. That piano is in perfect tune. It sounds beautiful when you play a chord. But listen, if you put that piano up in the attic for 50 years, things start to change. The keys start to stick, the keys go out of tune, and your piano sounds more like this. It's out of tune, and it doesn't function as well, and it's not harmonious. Our body is just like this. We have 400 survival genes that are NRF2 responsive, and this is what they look like when they are tuned in the presence of ProTandem. Remember now that of these 40, 400 genes, only three of them are the superoxide dismutase that I talked about, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. All the rest of them are survival genes, other survival genes. Let's zoom in on this box. Just focus on these 63 genes. Look how nice and smooth they are. This is in the presence of ProTandem, but this is what it looks like when you zoom in on them and the ProTandem is absent. It looks like this. They're all out of whack. You have high ones and you have low ones. 
The low ones would be ones like glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and catalase. And the high ones would be other genes that are expressed in an abnormal fashion. So we want it to look like this. This is what protanum does to those same genes. Look at them. The one that was high was brought down. The one that was low was brought up. I'm going to go backwards. Look at this again. Look, at, look how out of order this is. But when you put those cells in the presence of protanum, it does this. This is unbelievable, you guys. The science behind this is just brilliant. So if you take another gene, this is one that was found in too high a, uh, a quantity. It's called PFAB4 and 5. It's a gene that's expressed too high. When you put it in the presence of protandum, it drops it down by 85%. 66% on the other one. It's not important, the numbers, uh, just to illustrate the fact that some genes are reduced down and some genes are, redu are increased or upregulated. Well, what does that gene do? Well, that gene happens to be the one that's responsible for causing calcifications in your heart and your blood vessels, and also is responsible for associations with metabolic syndrome and uh, insulin resistance. We don't want that to be high. We want it to be low, and that's exactly what ProTandem does. So in the future, grandma is going to say that she had her genome tuned by ProTandem. All right. You know, the uh, Washington State University said that we might be on the verge of new literature of health effects of NRF2, which may become the most extraordinary therapeutic and preventative breakthrough in the history of medicine. This was published in 2015. So essentially, what we're talking about here is, is we're recognizing that this is where the future of medicine is. This is a breakthrough. And we have it in our midst. It's as simple as an organic herbal product. It's inexpensive, and it does so much. I want to also tell you that NRF1 is reportedly coming to Australia very soon. This is by report. I don't know the exact date of this. I want to just mention that this is the second arm of wellness of a four-legged table to, that supports human health and wellness and aging. I want to just briefly touch on it, and then I'm going to digress to answer some questions. Uh, I want to talk about NRF1. What's the concept here? Well, we have mitochondria. I alluded to that before. Your mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Every metabolic function in the cell is performed here in the, in the mitochondria. Your cells need them to survive. So this is what uh, uh, the map looks like. These are all the, prod all the different functions and biochemical events that take place in that mitochondria for us to survive. Now, if you take those free radicals and you look on the far left-hand side to that little pink structure, that's the mitochondria. If that's damaged right there, it's, it's as though a hurricane wiped out the entire cell structure. Not only would it destroy the nucleus, these free radicals, but it destroys the mitochondria, which produce metabolism and allow us to produce energy. Without them, the cells die. So here are your three mitochondria in this example of a cell. A typical cell might have 200 to 400 of these. But as we age, we start to lose mitochondria. They start to go away because they've been damaged from cumulative effects of free radicals in the cells. And what protandum NRF1 does, oh, I want to just mention, so the cell, the, those mitochondria are gone and the cell's destroyed from the inside out. Essentially, that cell is dead and we have less of them. So NRF1, which is coming your way soon, activates the NRF1 protein, which is another survival protein. It actually increases the number of mitochondria, protects your mitochondria from damage, supports cells rejuvenation, supports ATP energy formation, and then in, as a re result of that, of course, improves your brain function because it has a lot of mitochondria. Your heart as well has tons of mitochondria because these are very metabolically active tissues and also your blood. So essentially improves your cellular metabolism. So I'm gonna, this is the concept of NRF1 and NRF2 uh, activation. I'm gonna turn my share, screen share off so that I can uh, see your face again and interface with the audience. And I hope that everybody understood the concepts of that. I love to teach the science because it's absolutely brilliant.